Hello everybody, Internet Terry back again with another video and today's video guys is going to be about to talk about the big three, the, the biggest, the three, the, th the three biggest tennis players of all time that we ever have seen and of course I'm talking about Novak Djokovic, Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer. Uh, I have thought about these three, um, one day I, I, I was thinking about who of these three is the most unique tennis player. Who of these three is the most unique? Is it Federer? With his first strike tennis, with his magical style on court, with his effortless style, where he approaches, where he tries to win points as fast as possible, even though that he can play baseline tennis as, as well, of course, but he, he, he's not a grinder. Uh, he is a first, he is an ultra aggressive tennis player who wants to end the points as quick as possible. Or is it Novak Djokovic, who is a offensive defensive player, if you can, if you understand what I mean. He is a wall, a walking, running wall. Everything you hit at him, he hits back at you. He can play aggressive from the baseline. He can, he can play defensive from the baseline. He can... He can strike the ball, he strikes the ball really clean, he, he can play aggressive tennis as well when he needs it. He doesn't do that all the time, especially not as, as often as Federer does, absolutely not. His length, his, his depth on the, on, on the balls are just amazing. We have never seen a player, tennis player, with as good, as great length on the ball like Novak Djokovic. Or is it Rafael Nadal, the clay court king, the clay court goat, without any question of a doubt, with 12 French Open titles to his name, uh, with uh, a super unique tennis style, with a high, high topspin. I don't, we have never seen as high Top spin as Rafael Nadal. Who of these three is the most unique tennis player, in my opinion? Federer, Djokovic, or Nadal? I was thinking about this the other day. Who do I believe it is? What is the answer? And the answer was actually pretty easy for me when I was thinking about it. I didn't need to think a lot because sometimes, guys, I, when I do videos, like when I did the last videos, the last video I did a couple of days ago, uh, when I was thinking about to mention the greatest top 10 match, the top 10 list of the greatest matches of all time that I have personally seen. Uh, some of you have asked me, but didn't you see the Wimbledon final in 1980 between John McEnroe and Bjorn Borg? It was an epic one. No, I have seen highlights about that match, but I have not seen the match live on TV. So uh, I was refreshing when I did my video, the greatest top 10 matches of all time that I've seen. I was refreshing on my opinion that I have personally seen. Uh, so, and I, it was not easy to pick those 10 ma matches because I've seen so many great matches. I've seen so many great matches throughout the years, guys. Uh, so I was thinking when I did that video, I thought about that long time, several weeks, several weeks. I thought about which match, which match should I pick, which which place, fifth place, fourth place, sixth place, things like that. But when it comes to this topic today, who of these three are the most unique one? I didn't need to think a lot. I I thought about it one hour max, one hour max. Uh, and it is Rafael Nadal, guys. It is Rafael Nadal. Without any question of a doubt, it is him. And now you're asking the probably the question, why? I'm going to tell you why. Players like Federer, players like Djokovic, we will see in the future. Not as good as them. I don't think so. At least not the 
20, 30 years from now. I don't think play, a player like Federer and Djokovic it, it, it doesn't come. They are not just around the corner, all right, if I say so. They will come, but it will take a long time, very, very long time, maybe 20 or 30 years. A player like Rafael Nadal, we will never see ever again. And what makes Rafael Nadal so bloody unique, it is not... It has to do with French Open, of course. It, it has to do with, with, with French Open, but uh, it it has it it the, it has to do with it. But it is not the main reason why I, I, in my opinion, he is the most unique tennis player of these three. He is the most unique tennis player of all time that I have ever seen in my life. It is with his forehand. It is how he hits his forehand. I have never in my entire life, and I don't think that you guys as well, have seen a player hit a forehand like Rafa Nadal does. For God's sakes, he almost, when he hits the forehand, he almost, he almost hits his head with the racket. Of all that spin he generates when he hits the ball. If you look at Roger Federer, Roger Federer, he hits the, he has a, a nice, great forehand, of course, one of the greatest forehands of all time, Roger Federer. But it is not unique in, in, in any way. It is not unique the way Roger hits the forehand. We have seen players in the past hit, hit the good forehands. Pistol Pete was one of those who did hit great forehands. Djokovic, he hits the forehand really good as well. Djokovic's forehand is really underrated. He has a great forehand, Djokovic. When you compare, because Djokovic gets all, mostly times most credit for his for his backhand, which is a super solid shot. Uh, his backhand, his Novak's backhand almost never breaks down. But if you look what with with if you look in which shot Novak does most damage with, it is with the forehand, actually, not with his backhand. If you look at the winners, Novak does more winners with his forehand than, than, what, than what, what he does with his backhand. But, but I understand people, uh, when you see Novak play tennis, you get the feeling that his backhand never breaks down, which is the case, and his forehand can sometimes break down, sometimes. But when it comes to damage, in which shot he does most damage with, it is with his forehand, actually. But Novak's forehand is not unique as well. We have seen player hit uh, forehands like Novak in the past, and we will see players hit forehands in the future as well, like Novak Djokovic. But Rafael Nadal's forehand, it is something we have never seen in the past and it is something we will never see in the future as well. Why do you think Rafael Nadal is so bloody successful on clay? Why? Why do you think so, guys? Rafael Nadal is just, he is born to be a great, the greatest clay court player of all time. He is like, he is born to be it. Why? All because, not all. The big reason for that is his unique forehand. Yeah, he's, he's tremendous good defensive. He has tremendous good defensive skills. Yeah, I agree. But we have other players who have had tremendous good defensive skills as well in the past. They didn't win 12 French Open titles. Take a player like Djokovic. You know that Djokovic and Rafa Nadal, they have pretty identical tennis styles. And that's why that's why when they face each other, their matches are so so bloody good and so bloody intense because they two identic identic tennis styles go against each other. They give each other the same they, their own medicine. They both or they both like to play from the baseline. They both are good defensives. They both have great defensive skills. They both. A play tennis with big margins, not small margins like Roger Federer. They both like long rallies. So why why is Rafa Nadal so much more successful than Novak Djokovic on clay? Novak Djokovic has only one French Open title. Rafa Nadal has twelve. When they, they when both of them 
have same kind of identic tennis styles. You and Djokovic is a great defensive player. Djokovic is a running walking wall, like I said earlier in the video. So why why doesn't he have more than one French Open title? Why? The easy is the forehand. The the, the, the answer, I'm, I'm sorry, the answer is the forehand. Djokovic's forehand is not as lethal, is not as superior on clay like Rafa's is. The spin that Rafa generates with that shot, which he does in all surfaces, by the way, not only on clay, but it is as most effective on clay. It, that's the reason... That's the reason why Rafa Nadal. That's that's the my, that's the biggest reason I should say. That's the biggest reason why Rafa Nadal is so bloody, bloody, bloody good on clay. It is because of the spin. It is because of the forehand he hits over his head. He almost hits his head with the racket of the of the spin that he generates. Federer has a great forehand. Djokovic has a great forehand. On other surfaces, their forehands are not as good on clay like Rafa Nadal's is. Because Rafa has that kind of high topspin. I have a friend who has seen Rafa Nadal live. I have a friend, a very close friend to me, who has seen Rafa Nadal live. And he did it in Australian Open. Not on clay. Do you know what he said to me? He said to me, my friend, when I saw... He's a big Rafa fan, by the way. When I saw Rafa hitting his ground strokes, both with his forehand and backhand, but especially forehand, because Rafa generates more spin with his forehand than he does with his backhand. I, he said to me, that I thought that every shot he was hitting, I thought that the ball was going out. I thought, what the... What the my dear God, the ball is going out. Because he... That kind of uh, topspin he generates above the net, it is not like this or this or this. I, I cannot even show it on camera. It is over one meters. I thought that the ball is going out. Every time was, he was hitting it, I thought that the ball is going out. But it was landing just before the baseline every single time. And imagine you, can you guys imagine... How Rafa's opponent feel when they face him on clay, where his forehand bounces even higher? Can you imagine? This match that my friend was talking about was on hard court, Australia Open. So just imagine as Rafa's opponent to face Rafa Nadal in French Open, five sets, and Rafa hitting that those kind of forehands, just landing on the baseline and bouncing very high up, up on your shoulders. Just imagine. It is a nightmare, for God's sakes. Nightmare. That's why players with one single-handed backhand, they have a nightmare against Rafa Nadal on clay. Nightmare, a la Roger Federer, a la Dominic Thiem, a la Stan Wawrinka, you name it, basically. And it, it is not any coincidence whatsoever why Rafa has lost only two tennis matches on clay when it comes to five sets, all matches including even the Davis Cup, and both of those losses, losses has come to players with strong two-handed backhands. Robbie Söderling, 2009 French Open. Novak Djokovic, 2015 French Open. So there you have the reason why I believe, in my opinion, the most unique tennis player of these big three, the most unique tennis player of all players counting, that of all times, it is Rafa Nadal. And the reason to that is his unique forehand. Nobody in the tennis history in the past has hit forehands with this kind of spin, and with this kind of technique, like Rafa hits it when he hits his forehand, he almost hits his head with the racket. Nobody. I don't think that you can even teach a, a kid with, who is five, six years old and, and a dad or a mom gets him to tennis school and he says to the to tennis coaches, teach my son or my daughter to hit forehand like Rafa Nadal. Uh, 
I don't think it is impossible. I think it. I think it is impossible. I don't know who has teaching Rafa Nadal. Probably Uncle Tony, his uncle, who teached him his first tennis lessons when Rafa was four, five years old. So what makes Rafa so bloody unique and the most unique tennis player that I have ever seen in my life, it is his incredible topspin. It is his incredible technique of hitting forehands. Djokovic doesn't hit that kind of forehands. Roger Federer doesn't hit that kind of forehands. And that, and that technique itself has made Rafa Nadal so bloody murderous good on clay. If Rafa Nadal I can tell you this, guys. If Rafa Nadal didn't have this technique with where he is forehand above his head and with when, where he generates this kind of huge topspin, I can guarantee you guys, I swear to God, you, look, I can guarantee you guys, he would have never had won 12 French Open titles. Never. He would have won French Open, absolutely. Five, six, seven, eight French Open titles, yes. Because he's he has so much great good aspects of the game on the other parts with uh, not making many unforced errors, being a, a really good defensive skills, having a, a really strong mental in having that um, winner mentality to never give up. But it would never, without if he had a, a, a forehand, a technique forehand like Djokovic and Federer, where Federer and, and Djokovic hits forehands more uh, like all, all other players, we, uh, uh, when, we all know that Djokovic and Federer doesn't hit forehands above their head. We all know that. And if Rafa hit his forehand in the, the same way like Federer and Djokovic does, Rafa would have never won French Open 12 times. I swear to you guys, he will never, never, never had won French Open 12 times. The biggest reason... Not the only reason, the biggest reason why Rafa, Rafa Nadal is so successful on clay the, and the biggest reason why Rafa Nadal has won French Open 12 times is because of his unique way of hitting his forehand. All right, guys, it is it, it, is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and bye-bye.